Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today's video is in honor of the legendary meatloaf who recently passed away. And while I've heard meatloaf before, I've never done a deep dive analysis into one of his songs, and I also have never heard this particular music video version of I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. So let's get to it. In this intro section, they have a lot of fun play with how the sound is placed um, so that sound spatialization essentially goes from right and then back to left and then right to left again. Uh, it's really, uh, it definitely is capturing because it feels like, oh, something is happening and it's going right by me. Very cool. Uh, definitely grab some headphones for this uh, if you have some nearby and check it out. Immediately, let's talk about one of the things that I think Meatloaf is able to uniquely capitalize on, uh, and that is he is very expressive with his pitch. He is not being extremely precise with being on one pitch and then the next and then the next. He has lots of little slides between, essentially. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that is not tuned because if it was tuned, it would sound totally different. People would be thinking, oh, I need to make this perfect. And they'd adjust it and they'd say, oh, okay, all of this stuff in between, you know, let's make it one picture or the other. And instead, he is so expressive in his slides. Playing with pitch like this, as long as you're getting to the right end points, right? And the midpoints too, but uh, the play that he has within this framework that is totally correct, it makes it so very expressive. It makes it sound like it has tons of longing and pleading in it. Also, I love the piano in the intro. <laughs> so good. There's just so much emotion in his voice. You can feel the pull and the tug of it. Uh, you can hear that he's really in character as well. I love this. He's uh, He has such a legendary career of playing so many roles. You know, 
both in film and on Broadway. He's really spanned a, a huge gamut. And you can hear that longing and that pleading in his voice so very clearly without even needing to see what he's doing. You don't need to see his body or or, or know what the story was. You just instantly are drawn in because you hear someone in desperation. I love the emotional expression that he has. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Keep going. But I'll never forget the way you feel right now. Oh no, no way. And I would do anything for love. Oh, I would do anything for love. I would do anything for love. But I won't do that. I like that extra insert. No, I won't do that. <laughs> and some days it don't come easy. And some days it don't come hard. Some days it don't come at all. And these are the days that never end. Another thing that is really awesome about Meatloaf's voice is his enunciation. You might have heard me talk about this recently in the Kickapoo video where he was uh, sort of like as a guest star section at one point. And he just, his enunciation is on point. And it is so, so clear and almost overdone at times that we never need to guess at what word he is saying. If you just Listen in here to the way he is singing through his consonants. Uh, I'll, I'll go back and stop at a couple points and talk about where this enunciation is particularly impressive. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. No, I won't do that. So even in uh, some days and come easy, both times he goes into those M's, he really leans into them and sings through them with tons of focused energy. A lot of times when we close to a consonant or needing to sing through a consonant, um, the energy of it will dwindle a little bit, right? If you sing, um, like just say one, um, a lot of times when people get to the end, the energy will kind of go back this way. It's not as easy to continue sound through a partially closed mouth. And he, when he gets to these M's in some and come, he is singing through those M's with so much extra energy. So it makes them just buzz and go into the next word very clearly. Um, back just a little bit. Don't come easy. And some days it don't come hard. Some days it don't come at all. And these are the days that never end. He does the same exact thing on and these are the days. So again, going to the N of and and these, the TH, that's especially a difficult one. Um, THs can be voiced or unvoiced. Uh, voiced TH like the, right? Um, that has laryngeal action that's happening underneath the vocal folds will go wacka wacka, make a pitch, and then you have the 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 tongue position on top that sends it through essentially. Um, thought is an example of an unvoiced th, right? Same tongue position for the th, but this one doesn't have any sort of uh, action that's happening in the larynx to vocalize a pitch. Um, but in in his case. And these, he goes into that voiced TH with tons of extra energy. No you can save me, no one else can save me now but you As long as the planets are turning As long as the stars are burning As long as your dreams are burning You better believe it, better 
<laughs> I love the play with tempo in this song. The way that we just had a Richard Ondo going into I Would Do Anything for Love. Richard Ondo meaning that it slowed down and expanded as we got to the chorus. Essentially, really, really cool. I love it when we have uh, that kind of tempo play. It, uh, it, it, the tempo often affects the heartbeat, right? So when you have that kind of thing, um, your heart wants to shift as well. And I think that really helps with the adrenaline and feeling of the song. Um, I also wanted to call out to the video production quality. I read that this took four days to shoot. And I'm looking at this and thinking, wow, they found such great moments with lighting. Like as, as she was walking through the forest at one point, it's just totally beautiful, totally beautiful. And in addition to that, apparently Meatloaf's makeup took two hours to put on. So I'm guessing he did that makeup every day and then shot a full day in addition to that. Whoa, that is some intense, intense music video making right there. And, oh my goodness, that had to be expensive too. Very, very impressive production for this. Go back just a little bit. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this gorgeous lighting. I know you can save me. No wow. Can save me now, but you, as long as the planets are turning, as long as the stars are burning, as long as your dreams are burning, you better believe it that I would do anything for love. And I'll be there till the final. This is one of those qualities in Meatloaf's voice that I find extremely interesting. Um, and there's a little piece of my classical brain that goes, is that, what, what exactly is he doing to create that? I think he's doing that in a really healthy way, but the way he's weaving in and out of it, oh, that's so cool. You know, I want to know about like all of the function that's happening in there. So this thing that I find fascinating is when he essentially adds more air into his sound versus um, creates like a more condensed pressed sound at times. Right as he went into this chorus, he has an almost raspy, airy, fluffy sound that happens. And a lot of times he'll almost create like a, like a tenor squealo and create a lot more, um, a lot more drive through this sound. And I think this is this is going to be largely affected at the laryngeal level, which is fascinating. Uh, and at the same time, sometimes like if you think about oh I, this functional thing and this functional thing, and I'm gonna put this and this and this and this together, we don't have that many nerves that can feel that many things inside of our larynx. So that's a bit tough to do. So often if you approach it from an emotional standpoint instead, you'll get a lot closer to the effect that you're aiming for. And I think that that's what Meatloaf does. I think he just pours so much emotion into a moment and has these colors of voice that come along with it. Okay, I'm gonna go back again and hear this wonderful Richard Ondo going into the chorus. <laughs> Like a hush. This definitely has Beauty and the Beast vibes. I'd read about that where you almost have a like an obsessive overlord kind of um, that's um, really just wants love and wants that to to blossom and grow, but maybe doesn't know how to make that happen. This uh, the way he's obsessing over the image of her is fascinating. It makes me really want to watch a lot more, of course. Um, and then in his voice, the way 
I hear him use vibrato sometimes and speed it up a little bit um, to create that more sense of urgency is, well, it's pretty amazing and it really works with the character as well. Let's go back and then I'll keep on going a little further. Some days I pray for soul. Some days I just pray to the God of sex and drums and rock and roll. And maybe I'm lonely. It's all I about. <laughs> oh, this is such a good song. It's just right again. This variation of tempo is amazing, but there's so much epicness in it as well. I I really dig that we have a back uh, background choir that comes in here. Um, I, I dig the, the, we have moments of rock and roll where we have full drum kit going and you've got guitars just pounding away too. But then there are moments where you have this classical piano spanning the whole, whole bit. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's very, very epic in the composition. Um, really, really cool. Okay. We're going to go back a little bit. It gets, um, it gets my blood pounding really nicely. Okay. Some days I pray for silence, and some days I pray for soul. Listen, listen to the way he goes to the word pray. He, right? If you just say it, pray, it. It goes by rather quickly, but instead he enjoys every single moment of that word. And he savors the R that comes up and, and sings right through it with tons of energy. And some days I right, that enunciation, it's incredible. One more time. And some days I pray for soul. Some days I just pray to the God of sex and drums. There's that beautiful timbre shift again of this, you know, he was had that um, urgency, a little more pressed, compressed sound, and then switches to this, uh, it's like a hollow sound in some ways. Um, I, I definitely, I do hear this done in opera as well, but it's often a more reserved effect and he's just is using it everywhere. It's such an expressive element that I really, uh, I find fascinating. And I think is extremely effective for his voice. This is glorious. Once again, the expansion into the chorus is so dead on. Uh, composer uh, Jim Steinman, I believe is his name. He really nailed this and I believe wrote well for the dramatic aspect of Meatloaf's voice. When you have somebody that has been on Broadway and is able to handle this level of drama, you need to write for that. You need to expand upon that. And he did extremely well. And you can just hear how Meatloaf's voice blossoms and grows within that crescendo and slowdown. So both the build up and the slowdown that go into the chorus, it's really, really well written for Meatloaf. As long as the fires are burning, as long as you burn. I just 
love this like total rock and roll moment where you have the boom, boom, like moment with the guitar. It's awesome. That is such a gorgeous shot. Right, that is amazing. Again, love this, love this film production. Um, the light on his face, and then of course you have um, actress Dana Dana Patrick is her name. Um, not the not the voice in the background. It's Dana Patrick that is um, that is acting in this, and you might hear Lorraine Crosby's voice. So. Uh, this beautiful image, of course, of Dana on, on the bed that is just, right, it's extremely sexy, extremely hot. And you can see the way that Meatloaf looks completely tormented. Uh, I love the shot also of the makeup, right? That's, um, that's uh, got this visceral like deformation that's happening there. And um, the way that you hear that pain and disturbance in his voice, it's just perfectly shot. I love the way he tossed that out. I totally dig the way he dug into this growl as well. Um, it has a fierceness about it, but it also has continuity in the sound, so it doesn't sound like his vocal folds are actually frying. Really clear words, though. amazing tempo shifts here, right? And the way that we get really pumped up by, I would do anything for love, right? right? You're like, yeah, I'm pumped up. I'm, I feel like this would be a great running playlist. And then all of a sudden it's so sad and you're like, no, we need to bask in this moment, this glorious, glorious moment. And let's take a moment to just let Meatloaf's voice expand and be glorious. Ghostbusters? No, I won't do that. No, I won't do that. There we go. I was gonna say, I know that we have Lorraine Crosby in here. I thought, okay, she's mixing the backing vocals. I think she actually sings like some lead parts in here. This is gonna be Lorraine Crosby singing, but of course you have Dana essentially lip syncing here. So um, yeah. It's kind of do will you raise me up? Will you help me down? Will you get me right out of this god forsaken town? Will you make it all a little less cold? I can do that. I like the way she has so much heft in her sound. It seems like a really good balance for Meatloaf's voice as well. And he sits uh, higher in a male register and she sits lower in a female register. So there's this contrast of timbre. His has got a little more um, brassiness in the top, right? And then hers has more warmth in it while still having tons of power to match that energy level. Ooh. 
was, <laughs> she even does that thing with the little sliding down stylish thing that Meatloaf often does right there on Cold. Will you make it all a little less cold? Cold. I can do that. <laughs> I I love how in this section she has moment of tenderness. You hear her back off and have a little that the husky quality too, or the um, the hollow quality that Meatloaf did, and then also do that same thing where she brings a lot more power into it. Uh, it's such a good combination of the voices. And there's that lightness, a lot more strength. You see that it's time to move on. Oh, it's such a sweet moment. I won't do that. I won't do that. I know the territory I've been around. It'll all turn to dust and we'll all fall down. No. That's so, that's so on point for... It's on point for the way that they are being close to each other in style uh, when she sings won't fall down it again has a slight slide off of it um but the way that the voice becomes more slender in its power on top is very similar to meatloaf's voice Territory up and around. It'll all turn to dust and we'll all fall down sooner or later you'll be screwing around No, I won't do that. For love. Oh, I will do anything for love. Oh, I don't know when it happened, but I, I do see that the, the makeup um, has shifted now, and it's just his face. That's nice. Was that? I want to go back a little bit. There you be screwing around. I won't do that. So there's the makeup still, and no, then I won't do that. into no makeup. Oh, I will do for so much emotion. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Hmm. No, I won't. <laughs> Who needs to ride a horse into the sunset when you have a motorcycle, right? <laughs> I really appreciate the way this music video expanded into a different storyline that I wouldn't necessarily have attributed to the song. Like moments when the makeup was fading off. I feel that this has given me a new appreciation for the sense of awe that I hear in Meatloaf's voice at the end. And overall, his expressiveness is just incredible. And I love the way they captured so many different emotions in the music video to match moments when he was fierce with consonants or um, you know, pulling at your heartstrings with that pitch or extra vibrato. He's just an incredibly expressive artist and we lost somebody truly truly great if you'd like to see some more analysis of meatloaf you should check out this video on kickapoo and i hope to see you somewhere again soon